All right, I told you in the last lesson that I would show you how to use the XY coordinates in conjunction with rulers. So we have created our bubbles here, but we have created only ones from this section to this section going up. So I'm thinking it may be good if we have some other, a few on the sides here that go up. So in order to show you that, I'm going to show you a new tool, and that's rulers. So first of all, let's, let's insert, okay, I'm going to add one, two, three, six more bubbles. So I'm going to click my top layer, and I'm going to go insert, one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. Now if you remember, we click on our first keyframe here, hold down shift, and then move to the layer that we want, which is the next one up, and then it highlights that whole section. Then you hit Alt, and we move up a layer, and I'm going to stagger these so they start at different spots. and like so. Oops, move that back a little. All right, and I'm going to take this, move it up here, alt it up. Yeah, that's the problem. You can only copy up one line, so I'm going to delete our because it copies in two, um, that last top layer you can't do it to unless you create an extra layer, which I'm going to just end up deleting. So in this case, um, we've added one, two, three, four, five additional bubble layers. So um, we can rename them really quick here. So bubble nine. Ten, eleven, twelve, and last one, thirteen. All right. Now I'm going to hide all layers except for the one I'm dealing with, and that's just a shortcut. Remember last time I X'd out each layer individually, but what's nice about this top one is you can show or hide them all and then uncheck the one you're dealing with, which in this case is the ones we see that don't have an end point. So let's start with bubble 9, and we are going to create our end point, which is going to be our key frame. Remember, that's how we determine the end point. So I'm going to put it there around that section, insert keyframe, and the tweening is already copied, so all we had to do was insert our end point. And now, oh, let me unhide the actual martini glass, that's the one thing that would help to see. All right, so now that we're on bubble nine layer, I want this symbol to start over here on the side. Well, if I take it and move it over, right? We've done this before. Once you're clicked on the symbol, the properties of that symbol show XY coordinates. And you're thinking, well, what does that mean to me? I, I, mean, I mean, I'd just be guessing if I put numbers in there, right? Well, you would, unless you are viewing the rulers. Aha! Now we see that that frame that we're on, on layer 9, or bubble nine, the bubble 9 layer, x is 178. Now do you see if that corresponds to anything on here? 178 by 172. Aha! Well now if you look up at our horizontal ruler and our vertical ruler, it seems like it corresponds to those numbers. So that allows you to guess. So, for instance, let's just try entering in our x-coordinates. Let's enter um, 
125. Now notice how it changes. Ah, it moved it left, our symbol. So we now know that the x coordinates are these top pieces of data. The y coordinates are the vertical. So y is vertical, x is horizontal. So we want to go back to our 178 that we were at, right about there. It's this that we want to adjust in order to move the bubble to the top. So I'm guessing that that's about 125, or let's just say 122, just because we're already there. Ah, it's a little too high. But we can fine-tune to an exact spot. So um, let's go a little bit higher, 126. That looks perfect. All right. But the problem was is we're on the start point right now. So what we need to do is move that back where it was, back down here. We're going to click on our end point, and that's what we want to be. Make sure to click on the symbol in order to get the properties to come up for it. 1, 78, by... One, I believe it was 26. Yes, that looks right. Like so. So now we've, we've put in our endpoint by means of the xy coordinates. So now we know that approximately 126 is the height that we want these two. So now we can x out this and then take our next line. First of all, let's create our keyframe at the end. I'll put it there. Ah, but the problem was is it copied only the length that we had. So what we're going to have to do is undo that keyframe. When we copied from one layer to another but with the shift and the alt and pulling, dragging up, it only dragged the length of the frames that we originally had, which was, was this length. So we need to put our keyframe here. Oops. Actually, right within that um, shaded section. See, like so. Now it's copied the tween. But now that we are on our end point, we are going to go 178. Well, actually, we're going to move it over a little bit. Let's go back to our initial frame, which was here. And I'm going to move it over a little bit to here. And now our keyframe at the end, if we look at our original frame, It was 166.60, and um, our end point here is going to be 166.126. One like so. So that's just another way of precisely determining um, where we want our symbol to be. So how many more do we have to do here? And in some cases it's going to be quicker to do it this way, other cases it's not. So I just thought this was a good example to try and show you um, another way of doing it. So we've done 10 Let's do 11. Um, let's do it on the right side. So I'm going to move this one over here. And then I'm going to pick our end point here. Insert a keyframe here. And I'm going to take it up to there. All right. And 
now I'm going to hide that and then go here and I'm going to move this here and I'm going to make our end point a keyframe near the very end and I'm going to move it up to that point and our last one here I am going to pick our start point and I'm actually going to put this one over here on the end if I can and our end point I'll put right there and I'll move it to the top like so all right now let's unhide everything let's move back to the beginning and let's watch I'm gonna move this down a little so I can see this stuff and that's it let's play it ah look at that a bunch of different bubbles coming up everywhere all at the same time Ah, oh, there we go. See, it almost looks like a real drink. And I've looped the playback, if you notice there, which is just under control. And if I want to stop, I just go enter or stop. But if you check loop playback, that'll just keep playing the animation over and over again. So, look at that. You've made a bunch of bubbles coming up all over the glass in different spots, um, going in different at different speeds. So you're getting better at this animation thing. There we go.